Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. He is good and his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. We've come to lift up the name of Jesus because he's worthy. Hallelujah. Even at home, we can lift our voices. We can clap our hands. We can lift our hands because everywhere we are is a sanctuary as people of God. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord together.
Amen. Come on, let us bless God today. You know you need the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord today. Not only do we bless the name of the Lord today, but we bless the name of the Lord each and every day of our lives. We bless him for thinking enough of us to wake us up again, to see another day that our eyes have never seen before. We bless him for good times as well as the difficulties we all must face in this life. We bless his name. Now, I like the way the Lord has fixed this that I can bless his name no matter where I am or what's going on in my life. As a matter of fact, I found out walking with him that it makes me feel a little bit better when I bless his name every day. We ought to feel just a little bit better today now that we have blessed his name and we've prayed and we're um, ready for worship. That there's something about uh, coming together, there's something about worshiping together as a body. There's something about the Lord who continues to do great things for us even though we don't deserve it. We thank God for his faithfulness. Bless you. We thank our praise team who has blessed us, who continues to bless us every week. Amen. Thank God for all of them. Um, and certainly they have been a great group to work with through this pandemic and we thank God for their faithfulness and their stick to itness um, even when things didn't work out so we thank God for all of you bless you we thank God for all of you as well those who are uh, here with us physically but those who are sharing with us uh, via social media or conference call we thank God for all of you you could have uh, viewed somebody else's uh, post but we thank God for leading you right here to Friendships Post, and we are forever grateful uh, for this opportunity. Listen, there's a word that I want to lift, and then I'll get out of your way. Um, even on a rainy day uh, like this, I'm so glad God has a word for us. Amen. Y'all can cut me up just a little bit more. Amen. Cut me up just a little bit more. In the depths of the Old Testament, 2 Samuel chapter number 9. 2 Samuel chapter number 9. Amen. Hold it right there. That's good. That's good. 2 Samuel chapter number 9. I want to commence reading at verse number 3. Second Samuel chapter number nine, verse three reads, and the king said, is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the kingdom, Jonathan hath yet a son which is lame on his feet. And the king said unto him, where is he? Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Mesha, the son of Mel, in Lodibar. And king David sent and fetched him out of the house of Mesha, the son of Mel, from Lodibar. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth, he answered, Behold thy servant. 
David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. He bowed himself and said, What is thy servant? Thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am. God bless you. You may be seated. I want to talk briefly from this thought. Uh, grace happens. Grace happens. I think we're all familiar with that word grace. It is unmerited favor given from God. There's nothing that we've done so good to receive it. It is undeserved and unrepayable. God just loves us so until he just gives it to us. In fact, you and I have messed up a long time ago. God could just look right over us. But by his grace, he opens doors for us. Because of his grace, those things that really are designed to take us out in this life. God protects us from. That sickness, that accident, those enemies could have taken you out. Those decisions, but his grace kept us. Now, if you're anything like me and you begin to think about his grace, um, it ought to get you excited. Just thinking about where you could have been, what could have happened, what should have happened if it was not for his grace. Maybe the reason why the psalmist said it like this, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, then I wouldn't be here right, right now. Grace happens in all of our lives, whether we want to admit it or not. It's not some luck. It's not something that just happens. It's God's amazing grace that he shows to us each and every day of our lives. And so 2 Samuel chapter number 9 paints for us a picture of what grace looks like. Uh, this story that too many really don't know, but a story of a man who was lame on his feet, Jonathan's son, Saul's grandson who has found out in chapter number four of 2 Samuel that Jonathan, his father, and his grandfather were killed in battle. And so here it is now when David ascends now to the throne. Could have, should have, wiped out Mephibosheth. But David shows the kindness of God. No doubt David has looked at his own life and saw how God has kept him. In return now shows favor, shows grace, the kindness of God to Saul, who was his enemy, his family. Grace happens, brothers and sisters. And so I've gotten into practice of when God shows up to begin to think about the fact that grace happened again. As a matter of fact, this morning when we got up, y'all can sit there if you want to, grace happened again. You got here without accident or incident, 
grace happened again. And every time you're able to go to that job and receive blessing after blessing after blessing, you can say without hesitation or reservation that grace happened again. So as I look at this text, three points I'll share with you, and then I'll, I'll take my seat. As we look at the life of Mephibosheth, according to the story, was lame on both his feet. Chapter number four of the book of 2 Samuel, verse number four, tells us how Mephibosheth became lame. In the heat of the battle, when the word had come, to his nurse that his father Jonathan and grandfather Saul had been killed in battle. With haste, his nurse picks him up at the age of five. And she falls. And he becomes lame on both his feet. But not only, brothers and sisters, and first point, brothers and sisters, I want to make is that there are times when we receive, or rather we are, face difficult times, but it doesn't destroy us. We all face difficult times, difficult seasons, difficult situations, but yet it didn't destroy us. I'm going to say that one more time until you think about that, that, that we all have faced some difficult situations, difficult seasons, difficult things that have happened in our lives, but yet it did not destroy us. Well, how do I know you're sitting here right now? And so Mephibosheth has been in that place. He's had to experience something difficult. He experienced the difficulty of losing not only his father, but his grandfather. Experienced the difficulty of falling or being carried by somebody he trusted to carry him and falls and drops him and becomes lame on both his feet. Brothers and sisters, not only does he experience these difficulties, but his own name, Mephibosheth, literally means out of the mouth of shame. Literally, shame is his name. And brothers and sisters, can, can I add that there are difficult seasons, difficult times in our lives that did not destroy us. And you begin to think about those difficult times. Yes, it could have been death. It could have been sickness. It could have been a broken heart. It could have been chaos in the family. No matter what has happened, what has transpired in your life, you can say it was difficult. It was rough. It was tough. But I'm still alive. You can say today, this second Sunday of September, that I'm still making it. I'm still making it. Sometimes I don't understand my own self. I'm, I'm surprised at, at what God has done in my life. I, I could have been wiped out, but, but I'm still alive. So you and I have a whole lot to be thankful for. And I'm still alive. It, didn't kill me, but it made me better. It didn't destroy me, but I'm determined to keep pushing. Yeah, it knocked the wind out of, out of me, but yet I'm still standing. He says, he had to deal with some difficult situations, but it didn't destroy him. But brothers and sisters, Look at now how God is in the story, in the life of Mephibosheth, working in his life. And the same God who's, who's worked in his life, shame is his name. He's lost his father and, and his grandfather. He's lame on both of his feet the rest of his life. It didn't kill him. He's still alive. Grace happened. How many of us can really say that grace happens? Grace has happened in my life so many times. But brothers and sisters, not only 
Did he have to face some dark times, some difficult days? It didn't destroy him, but here now King David asked a servant in his house, is there anybody left of the household of Saul that I can show the kindness of God to? Let that sink in because David was king and he was in a place that he could have destroyed anybody attached to his enemy. You know, they did that back in those days just in case the enemy didn't rise up and try to overtake the throne. He could have wiped him out. But here David says, is there anybody yet alive? The house of my enemy who tried to track me down and kill me time after time because of his jealousy. You know, I begin to think about that, brothers and sisters. A true mark of a believer, one who walks with the Lord, one who can not only speak well of his enemies, but also bless those who are attached to his enemies. <laughs> Y'all help me preach this thing. That, 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 that can, you, can you speak well of your enemies, but yet also speak well and bless those who's attached to your enemies. And here David is. He says, is there anybody left, anybody still alive that I can show, get this, the kindness of God to? And I'm going to get to that here in a minute, the kindness of God. But, but listen, here's point number two, point number two. Uh, Mephibosheth is in despair, but get this, it's not his destiny. What are you talking about? He's in despair, but, he's, but it's not his destiny. Ziba said, yes, Jonathan has one son. It's in the text. But, but King, he, he, he's in bad shape. He's, he's lame on both his feet. To make bad matters worse, he's living in Lodibar. Which means no word, no communication, no pasture. It was the hood. It was the place over there nobody else really wanted to be. Um, here he is, lame on his feet. Shame is his name, and he lives over there. King, yes, there's one who's still alive. But he's really in bad shape. He's really in no position to stand in your presence, king. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, that there are times when uh, we are identified by our struggle. We, we are identified by the place where we came from, identified by who we hang out with. We are identified by our past. But, but thanks be to God, David looked beyond all of that, which paints for us a beautiful picture of what God does for you and I. Shame may be our name and we may not have the best past and our future may not look as bright. But thanks be to God, he looks beyond all that other stuff. Y'all don't hear me this morning. He says, is there just one? Yes, there's one. He's lame on his feet. He's really not presentable to stand in your presence, king. He's in Lodibar. His paralysis would not be fitting to stand in your presence. And, 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 and he's lame on both of his feet. He's, he, he's in a bad place. He's in the hood. Nobody wants to deal with you if you're living in Lodibar. Especially if you're lame on your feet. But I'm so glad that God has a plan for misfits. God has a plan.
for those considered nobodies. Everybody in here ought to say something because uh, uh, you and I, I don't care what you got right now, you ain't always had it. God has blessed you beyond thousands. There, there's some under the sound of my voice, somebody said you wasn't going to amount to nothing, you are nobody, but thanks be to God, he had me on his mind. He says, that place over there. And I like this about Mephibosheth because nowhere in the text does it say he was in Lodibar depressed. Nowhere in the text does it say that he was in Lodibar getting ready to commit suicide. He's lame, but he's still living. He's left out, but he's still living. He's limited as to what he could do and go but he's still living come here somebody and and help me preach this because there's somebody under the sound of my voice you may be limited you may not have a whole lot but yet you're still living others had counted you out others have looked over you for years but yet you're still living that place over there Here's what I like about the text. This is the reason why I know it was not his destiny. He's in despair. It's not his destiny because look at what King David said after his servant Ziba told him all of these things. He's lame on his feet and he's not presentable to be in your presence and, 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 and he's in a bad place. He's in the hood. He's in Lodibar. David says, simply go get him. I wish I had a church to help me this morning. He said, go get him. I, I don't care if he's lame on his feet. I don't care where he lives. I don't care what has happened in his past. I want to show the kindness of God to him. And that's just like God who does that for all of us. I don't care what they've done. I still love them. I, I don't care where they've been. I still love them. I, I don't care what they will do. I still love them because I gave my life for them. David says simply go get them. Don't care what his past was. I don't care what's going on. I don't care about his presentation. Just get him here to my house. Third and final point. We see divine demonstration. It was a difficult place he came from, difficult situation that had transpired in his life, but it didn't destroy him. He was in despair, despair but it was not, wasn't his destiny. But now David shows the kindness of God. Our English dictionary really doesn't do justice to that word kindness in this text. But the Hebrew word hesed talks about God's grace, his kindness, his continuance. He doesn't stop. He is kind. He's grace. He's merciful. He is love. And he shows it to us each and every day of our lives. This hesed, God's grace. God, on a constant basis, continues to show us his kindness. We don't deserve it. Nothing that we've done to earn it. God knows we can't repay it. We didn't deserve it. We don't deserve it. You know, there's some folk who have the audacity to walk around here as if God owes them something. God don't owe you nothing. I don't care how much money you put in the church, how long you've been a member of the church. God don't owe us nothing. But let me flip that thing. We owe God everything. Come here, David. What shall I render unto the Lord? 
for all of his benefits toward me. You talk about Hesed. Talks about the character of God, his kindness. Talks about his compassion. Talks about his competence. David said, go and get Mephibosheth. I know shame is his name. I know he's lame on both of his feet. It does not look presentable in my presence, but go and get him so that I may show kindness unto him. So went to Lodibar, got him, fetched him according to the text, brought him. The first thing Mephibosheth did was bow down. Lame on his feet. Tragedy has struck his life, but, but he comes down to the palace and he bows before David. I'm going somewhere with this. David calls out his name and he says, yes, I am servant. He says, listen, I'm going to restore everything. I'm going to give you all the land back that belong to your grandfather, your father. I, I, I made a promise to, to, to my BFF Jonathan a long time ago that I take care of you. And so I want to fulfill my promise. I, I want to fulfill what I promised your daddy a long time, regardless of how your granddaddy wanted to kill me. I made a promise to take care. And so very touching response Mephibosheth gives and I'm going to my seat. He says, who am I? That you will look upon a dead dog. Not just a dog, and they didn't like dogs, but a dead dog. You know, according to law, they didn't touch or want to be around anything dead. He says, I'm nobody but a dead dog and you want to have something to do with me? Can I tell you that when you come before the presence of an almighty God and, and you recognize that you are nobody, make it known unto God. God, I'm nobody. I, I don't deserve the blessings that you give me. I don't deserve the air in which I breathe. I don't deserve what you've given to me. I'm nothing more than a dead dog. Thanks be to God. He looks beyond all of that stuff. He says, listen, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to restore all the land to you. But you will reap the fruits. And you don't even have to go out in the garden and pick them. I got some servants that I've already commanded to go out there and take. Y'all help me preach. I'm almost done. Here's what I want you to do. Just recline at my table. And you are able to eat continuously at my table. Y'all still missed your cue to shout that I don't care how bad you messed up. I don't care what you have done. Thanks be to God. God still gives you and I an invitation to come and sit at his table. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that we're dirty? We're messed up. We're filthy. But thanks be to God. He says still come and sit at my table. God, God's amazing grace. Thank God for his amazing grace. Recognize the grace. Thank God for the grace in your life. When you think about grace, when you think about God's amazing grace, it takes us back to Calvary. I know we're all familiar with Calvary, but there may be somebody listening who's not familiar with Calvary. One Friday evening, they hung him high, stretched him wide, dropped the head in, his, in the locks of his shoulders. Y'all know he died on Calvary. But early that third day morning, I'm trying to go to my seat. He got up again with all power in his hand. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Grace happened again. Grace happened again. And every time the Lord allows you to open up your eyes, those words ought to flow from your lips. Grace 
happened again. And you don't have to wait until you get to church to tell God thank you for his amazing grace. Yeah, every time the Lord blesses you to make one step, thank him for his amazing grace. And everybody in the church house today or sitting at home ought to be able to say thank you, God, for your amazing grace. And I'm so glad, brothers and sisters, uh, that he shows his grace each and every day of my life. Turn and tell somebody, say, neighbor, grace happened again. Yes, and I'm so glad that God looks beyond all of my faults. Yes, and he sees all of my needs. You ought to be able to shout today, y'all, uh, when you think about what the Lord has brought you out of. Yes, uh, when you think about uh, what the Lord has opened for you, you can stand there and say, Grace happened again. When the Lord has healed your body, Maybe not your body, but somebody else's body, you know, when he heals, uh, you ought to be able to say, uh, grace happened again. I'm out of here now, y'all. But you ought to be able uh, to praise God on the day uh, if grace happened in your life. Uh, while you're sitting in this church, uh, go ahead and praise him. Uh, the grace happened uh, at your house. Uh, praise him on the day. Uh, the grace uh, happened uh, at your neighbor's house. Uh, you ought to be able uh, to give God some praise uh, every time uh, he blesses me. Uh, to open up these eyes every time he blesses me to stand and preach his word every time he blesses me to sit at my table and eat food that don't belong to me put on clothes that I didn't get my own self go to a job that really don't belong to me I got to tell him thank you for grace and mercy when I look at that accident that should have taken me out when I look at those things that should have taken me out I got to pause and tell God thank you for grace happen again I'm out of here now y'all but if you don't mind oh shit if you don't mind being a living witness with me wave your hand if grace has happened in your life wave your hand if grace showed up this morning wave your hand if you're living uh, walking in God's amazing grace can you say yeah can you say yes let's have a little church today uh, thank him uh, because he brought you uh, thank him uh, because he kept you uh, thank him uh, because he looked out for you uh, thank him uh, because he gave it uh, and you know you didn't deserve it uh, has the Lord uh, done anything for you uh, has the Lord uh, opened some doors for you uh, has the Lord uh, moved some stuff out your way uh, has the Lord uh, given you strength uh, when you felt like giving up uh, wave your hand yes I feel like preaching anyway uh, wave your hand if you know that the Lord he's all right can you say yes I can't hear y'all at home can you say yes grace happen again lift up your hands oh ye gates lift up your hands and give God some praise if you know he did it for you 
God Almighty, uh, if you know he did it for you, uh, if you know he did it for you, uh, help me lift up his name. Uh, say yes. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you, Jesus. your place limited but yet God says go get them I can still use them in my service we ought to be glad on the day that God thinks enough of us to go and get us from our places from our predicaments our situations grace happens again God we thank you for your word has come forth. We thank you for using us. We thank you for your grace. Those things that you have given us, we didn't deserve it. We can never repay. You keep on doing great things for us. Keep on showing up time and time again. Thank you for reminding us that those difficult seasons didn't kill us. Those difficult circumstances didn't wipe us out. But it made us more stronger, more wiser. Now we're able to take those difficult experiences and sit at your table You've prepared a feast for us that we can eat continually at your table. No matter how filthy, how dirty we are, you still see fit to use us. God, we shall forever be thankful for your hand moving in all of our lives. God, there are times when we just don't understand. God, there's times in our difficult seasons we want to hurry things along. But thank you for staying power. Thank you for keeping us right there until we're able to see clearly you moving our lives. Bless now each and every one under the sound of my voice, whether it they're in the sanctuary or at their home sanctuary. Continue, God, to give us what we need. We need stuff we don't even realize we need. So help us. It is in the mighty name of Jesus we pray for Christ's sake. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Give God some praise on today. Amen. Grace happens and let us never forget his grace that he continues to show us each and every day of our lives. We want to extend the invitation. And there just may be someone here who's out of the ark of safety, listening on the conference call, viewing this live Facebook post. If you don't know Jesus, you're disconnected. And the only way to get connected is to come to him just as you are. I always like to say you don't have to dress up, you don't have to spruce up, 
can't get yourself cleaned up. Let the Lord do that. I'm a living witness and you all are living witnesses that he will do it. But you got to let him in. He specializes in working on hearts. You can come to him. You can know him. Invite him into your life. Lord, I'm a sinner. I'm messed up. I need to be saved. I believe what you did for us on the cross. You gave your life. You shed it blood. I believe that. Come into my life and save me. And I'm here to tell you, he will do it. Those who call on his name, he will in no wise cast you out. Bless those who privately, God, have come to you, that they may make it known to the world that they have accepted you into their lives. Now, God, lead them to a Bible-believing, preaching church. Lead them here to friendship, if it be thy will, that they may receive that covering, that guidance, that your people will continue to give them direction, that they may grow richly in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. That is our prayer. God bless you. You all may be seated. Thank you so much, deacons, deaconesses. Listen, we're getting ready to go. Amen. Getting ready to go again. We thank you so much for adjusting your schedules due to our uh, inclement weather. Um, we certainly love being outside. I know you all love it, so uh, we pray for better weather in the coming weeks. Um, but let us continue to keep uh, all of our churches in prayer. A lot of churches are suffering during this moment. A lot of churches are closing during this season, and so um, we need to continue to keep them in prayer. Uh, listen, uh, we want to uh, congratulate our ushers. Today, today is their ushers anniversary. Amen. Amen. Our ushers who do an amazing job here at our church, we take our hats off to you. So if you're listening, uh, we take our hats off to you, sir, you ma'am for the awesome job you do each and every week. It is not easy uh, standing at the door in God's house. What a blessing it is, but it's not always easy. Amen. And so um, if you're able to reach out to our ushers, uh, please do so. Let them know that they are appreciated. Amen. Amen. I believe that is it. Uh, offering time now um, in the house of the Lord. Uh, we do have a trustee here. Those who are here who would like to give uh, may do so in right now those who have uh, given online may do so um, those uh, who have in the past dropped it off we thank you so much for whatever way the Lord has led you to give you have done so you have truly been a blessing amen a blessing uh, in your giving uh, number one you have been obedient to God's word and it is made very clear in God's word that it belongs to him tithes and offering and so thank you for being so obe obedient to God's word and to leadership amen God bless you uh, at this time alright Deacon uh, Walker is going to come and make an announcement and I'll come back to give the benediction we had two sermons last week um, and so amen Good morning. Good morning, friendship. I stand before you um, on behalf of the pastor's anniversary, which is approaching soon. Um, when I think about my pastor, I think of a faith walker. Um, I look at Genesis 12, 12 and 1. Um, Abram was called to leave his country, to leave his family and his friends, to adjourn into a foreign land. Dr. Scotty Aaron was called by God to leave Sandusky, Ohio, to come to Friendship Missionary Baptist Church. 
and we are forever grateful, forever grateful. He didn't just hear the call, he answered the call. He showed up. And he didn't just show up sitting, he showed up working. So we thank God for that as well. He is a pandemic preacher. We thank God we needed him for such a time as this. So we thank God for him. You know, another thing when I look at my pastor, other than a faith walker, I see a vision seeker. You know, when I say vision seeker, he's not just a pastor that preaches on Sunday morning. He's a pastor that, that, seeks, that seeks the vision from God Monday through Sunday, 365 days a year. I know this. I believe this in my heart. I thank God for Pastor Scotty Aaron. I really do. Um, you know, I thank God to serve as a deacon under his leadership. It's an awesome challenge. It changed my life for the rest of my life. Friendship, I challenge you to bless the man of God. If you bless the man of God, blessings flow from the top down. You will be blessed, I promise you, in the name of Jesus. We have several events coming up. Um, Wednesday the 23rd will be Facebook Live at 6.30. We have a special activity on Saturday the 26th and September sun, Sunday, September the 20th, 27th. We'll be on the parking lot. God bless you. Bless the man of God if you want to be blessed. <laughs> Remember, while, while they're coming, just a couple more things. Remember our word on Wednesday, uh, 12 noon, will be our prayer time. But then also at 6.30, we'll have uh, our Bible study via conference call and Zoom. That's every Wednesday. Remember, toward the end of this month, um, we'll have our examination. We have the examination of uh, Minister uh, Parker is waiting with great anticipation uh, for that day prayerfully. Amen. And so the invites have gone out um, and we thank you so much for responding. Uh, for those who are, uh, have not been invited in person, we'll uh, have the opportunity to view it uh, on our social media. Amen. So let's continue to pray for them. Uh, let us sing together. Praise team is going to sing. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body, stand with me, agree with me, we're all a part of God's body, it is His will that every need be supplied.